In today's video, we're going to list the seven best growth ETFs you can invest in. We're going to see why these are the best growth ETFs based on performance, assets under management, fees, and overall allocation. And of course, keep in mind that the fact that the growth sector gave such a wonderful return in the past 12 months does not guarantee future results. My name is Ray, guys. If you don't know me and you're into finance and investing, check out my channel. And of course, you are very welcome to come on board and subscribe to it. But now, let's get right to the ETF number seven, which focuses on a portion of the market that is often overlooked. If you're constructing a diversified portfolio of the best ETFs, including a small cap fund in your holdings, can't really hurt. This is gonna give you coverage of a part of the market which is more volatile, of course, but includes growth companies under 10 billions that are still small enough to potentially 10x or 100x in the long term. This ETF has 3.1 billions in assets under management, a low expense ratio of 0.15%, or $15 for every $10,000 invested, and belongs to one of the biggest investing firms around. I'm talking about the SBDR S&P 600 Small Cap Growth ETF. Ticker SLYG. This ETF tracks the performance of the S&P Small Cap 600 Growth Index, a collection of stocks with strong growth characteristics including sales growth, earning change relative to price, and momentum. When it comes to performance, SLYG delivered 12% only in the last month. 17% year-to-date, and an average of 8.81% in the last 10 years. The value since inception, 6.66%, might sound disappointing to you, but the ETF was created in 2000, right before the dot-com bubble burst. So unfortunately, this is taken into account, while other famous ETFs that you probably know were created years later, so they just look better in the long term. With this ETF, you're gonna get 324 companies with a strong overweight in industrials, consumer discretionary, and information technology. Its top 10 holdings account for just 11% of the portfolio, so no stock overly influences the fund's performance. The average holding has a weighted average market cap of 3.4 billion, 3 to 5 year earnings per share growth of 12% and is valued at 16 times earnings, so really not high price for a growth ETF. For the second ETF, we're moving up the market cap ladder. This ETF is an iShares ETF by BlackRock that gives you access to the 305 best companies of the mid-cap growth sector of the US stock market, asking just 0.06% management fee in return. The performance has been great, with 20.82% in the last year and an average return in the last 5 to 10 years between 15 and 11%. I'm talking about the iShares Morningstar Mid-Cap Growth ETFs, which was created in 2004 and is one of the best passively managed mid-cap growth funds you can get your hands on. IMCG has roughly 23% in the industrial sector and 22% in the technology sector, followed by healthcare, financials, and consumer discretionary. With only 10% in the top 10 holdings, IMCG is nicely diversified and a top company, CrowdStrike Holdings, is a company which, by the way, until recently I had in my portfolio and delivered 161% only in the last 12 months. So, if you're seeking mid-cap growth exposure, you should consider IMCG. The next ETF is a large-cap growth ETF that belongs to one of my favorite investing firms, Schwab. I really like the ETF screening mechanism on this one, which has outperformed the popular Vanguard growth ETF since its creation and has consistently shown better risk-adjusted performance. The fund has returned an average of 15.39% returns since inception in 2009, 15% since 10 years, 20% since 5 years, and over 50% year-to-date. Just to give you an idea, if you had invested $10,000 in this ETF 10 years ago, you now have $40,035. I'm talking about the Schwab US Large Cap Growth ETF, ticker SCHG, with $24 billion in assets under management and an extremely low expense ratio of just 0.04% or $4 yearly for every $10,000 owned. As I said before, I like the way the holdings are chosen because the screeners consider the past, the present, and the future of a certain stock before bringing it on board. For instance, of the six screeners used, two are forward-looking, namely the one-year forward price to earning and the three to five-year expected growth in the annual operating earnings per share, two are backward-looking, namely the five-year annualized revenue growth and 21-quarter annualized earning per share growth, and two focus on the present, namely the current price to annual book value per share and the current dividend yield. The fund grew much more than the benchmark large growth Morningstar category. It includes companies like Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, and Meta. The next ETF is an S&P 500 ETF based on the growth sector and with an expense ratio of only 0.04% or $4 for every $10,000 invested, it gives you access to 225 great growth large cap companies of the S&P 500 growth index. This ETF is the SP 
TDR Portfolio S&P 500 Growth ETF, ticker SPYG, which tracks an index that consists of the stocks with the strongest growth characteristics based on sales growth, earnings change to price, and momentum. When it comes to performance, we can't really complain on this one. 13.24% in the last 10 years, 16.16% in the last 5, and 30% year to date. Since the ETF was founded in 2000, right before the dot com bubble burst, just like the small cap ETF that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you notice that the return since inception has been that great. So, what are you getting with this ETF? The biggest holdings are still going to be the usual ones, with Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon and so on. Notice that since this video is about growth ETFs, you're going to get a lot of overlap and you don't have to buy all these ETFs. See them more as options to choose from. Nevertheless, I try to keep the overlap as low as possible. For example, if you study the overlap of this ETF SPYG with SEHG, which I mentioned in position 5, you'll see that there is only a 46% overlap when it comes to the single holdings. Namely, 46% of the 227 holdings in SEHG are included in SPYG. Obviously, if you look at the overlap by weight, since the main companies are so heavy with their market cap, you're gonna have a higher overlap. By the way, it's worth mentioning that this ETF has a huge overweight in information technology with 47.67%, which actually right now scares me a little considering how strongly the information technology sector grew in the last 12 months. Nevertheless, if you trust that the technology sector will still be strong in the next 10 years, this is certainly a good ETF. For position number three, I'm gonna select an ETF coming from my favorite investing company, which is Vanguard. And no, unfortunately, I don't get any money from Vanguard. I just like them a lot. The ETF has 17.5 billion in assets under management, an expense ratio of just 0.08%, and is the most diversified ETF in this list, with 443 positions in the large cap growth market. I'm talking about VONG, the Vanguard Russell 1000 Growth ETF, which delivered a wonderful 10 year average annual return of 15.38%. 17.95% in the last 5 years and 35% in the last 12 months. If the last ETF was heavy on tech with almost 48%, this ETF is even heavier with more than half of its weight focused on information technology. As a conservative investor, although this list is on growth ETFs, I can't help but warn you to be careful and to avoid putting too much weight on your portfolio in the growth sector, only because the sector went well in the last 10 years. So remember to always keep a good, healthy balance between value and growth. There is an equivalent to VONG, which is the iShares Russell 1000 Growth ETF, IWF, with same performance since inception and over 99% overlap, but it has 0.19% expense ratio. So I don't know about you, but I love Vanguard because it always manages to keep expenses lower. My ETF number two is one of the biggest ETFs per assets under management with over $108 billion managed and a cheap expense ratio of just 0.04%. This is because the ETF is passively managed with a full replication approach, but above all because it belongs to the best really best investing company, which is Vanguard. If you invested $10,000 in this ETF 10 years ago, you now have $39,000, which means quadrupling your money in just 10 years. This ETF is the Vanguard Growth ETF. Ticker VUG, the tracks the CRSP US Large Cap Growth Index choosing growth stocks based on factors like three years historical growth in earnings per share and in sales per share, as well as return on assets. The result is a diversified group of 208 large cap growth stocks with a media market capitalization of 790 billions. In other words, the average VUG holding is a mega cap stock. If it wasn't enough with the other ETFs, here the tech stocks account for almost 55% of the fund's total net assets, with consumer discretionary and industrials following the tech sector. The portfolio's average stock has averaged 21% earning growth over the past five years, and VUG has averaged an annualized total return of 14.58% over the past decade, about 2% higher than the S&P 500. Let's move now to my ETF number one, which I know is the favorite growth ETF of most growth investors, and not only is a great growth ETF, but it's in the top five of the biggest ETFs of the world for asset under management. This ETF gives you access to the top 100 growth companies in the NASA Composite Index, giving you the very best at the forefront of technology and growth. If you still haven't guessed it, I'm gonna say the three magic letters. QQQ, the Invesco Trust Series 1 ETF, with 240.7 billion in assets under management and an expense ratio of 0.2% that can be reduced to 0.15% by buying the alternative QQQM. The Invesco QQQ ETF is a bet on 100 of the most innovative companies trading on the Nasdaq Stock Exchange. Now, 
To buy this ETF, you must really love the technology sector because QQQ is really loaded up at 57.64% of the portfolio. QQQ got its start in March 1999, and in October 2020, Invesco launched a slightly less costly version that is called the Invesco Nasdaq 100 Index Fund QQQM with 0.15% expense ratio. Still, the QQQ's average daily volume is more than double the QQQ M1. So if you plan to trade it often, which I don't suggest you do, consider the liquidity advantage of QQQ. Although most investors don't care about this detail, QQQ has a different fund structure than QQQM. QQQ is a trust, which means it's not allowed to lend out its shares to short sellers to generate revenue to offset fees. But QQQM can. In addition, QQQ cannot reinvest dividends, a strategy popular with buy and hold investors. If you invested $10,000 in QQQ 10 years ago, you now have a staggering $50,847 portfolio with an average growth of 17.66% per year. QQQ has generated better returns than the S&P 500 and the Russell 1000 in the last 10 years when it comes to revenue, earnings, and also dividend growth beating these two indexes 80% and 90% of the time, respectively. If you're a European or a British investor and you want to invest in QQQ or in general in a growth ETF, you can invest either in eQQQ, the Investco Nasdaq 100, that has an expense ratio of 0.3%, or even better, the Lixor Nasdaq 100 from Amundi, ticker LYMS, which brings the expense ratio down to 0.22%. You probably have your own opinion on whether the growth sector will keep outperforming or the value sector will maybe take over again this decade. So I'd love to know what you think and I'm sure the community can also profit from it. So drop a comment and let us know what you think. Don't forget to check the description of this video where I always link a lot of useful free financial tools that I created for you. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and drop a beautiful like here. Thank you so much guys. I wish you a great evening and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.